the car is a good car. They've just missed on their handling today. Fourth place is Robbie Gordon. Fifth place is Michael Andretti. They are not in contact with one another. Then Fernandez. And then this battle, Mansell and Moiselle. Battle for seven. Jack Villeneuve sits behind them. In eighth in ninth place. And then tenth, there's Jack in, in ninth place. There's Mario in tenth. I guess if I had a surprise here, it would have to be Villeneuve. I expected him to be a whole lot faster than he has. And I think it's probably just not figuring out the middle how there he is. Jock Bellanew, very good car, very good driver, and a very good team. He just hasn't figured out Mid Ohio Road Course. Update on Jack now. Here is Gary Gerald. Well, one of the problems that they experienced this weekend was the fact that, remember, two weeks ago in the race at Michigan, they had the big crash. And so while they were working to repair cars, they missed the test session at Mid-Ohio. That, they felt, really put them behind. So Villeneuve has had a, a catch-up weekend all weekend long. And all in all, I think the team was very proud of the fact that he was able to qualify as high on the grid as he did. That was in six, the course. And I, I think they just missed the setup for the race. That's where their testing hurt them. Villeneuve's fastest lap at 113 miles an hour. You saw it a moment ago. The fastest lap of the race set by Al Unser Jr. on lap 20 at 117.7 miles an hour. Fortunately, with the EDS scoring system, we can keep track of all of those things for you. Used to be two or three days after a race when we knew when the I fastest just, lap of the race was I was first. just going to say, so how did we ever get by without the EDS <laughs> system in the old days? Boy, I mean, we'd have information instantly now. Paul Tracy is 6.4 seconds behind. Al Unser Jr., the leader of the race. Computers, of course, everywhere now in the business. IndyCar just did a deal with IBM. It's an electronic world of racing. It used to be a mechanical world. It's changing over to at least a partially electronic world. Al Unser Jr. has finished eight of the nine last races he has run at Mid-Ohio. And he works now on the final lap, the white flag already given by Jim Swintow. And Al Unser Jr. came across the line 5.5 seconds ahead of Paul Tracy. But Paul Tracy at least has him in his sights at the moment. And Al Unser Jr. can't afford to lag too much behind the slower cars that sit ahead of him. Looking for Tracy. Tracy is still well back. Ellinger Jr. has to decide. Does he come around Parker Johnstone and Mark Smith, or does he just stay there? The finish line is only one, at, well, two turns away from where he is right now, so he'll probably stay where he is. Ellinger Jr. heading through the carousel now, out of the carousel, and for the checkered flag as Ellinger Jr scores his sixth win of the season and the 25th win of his career. Al Unser Jr. has taken the run at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. We'll be back to talk with him after this. Back at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course as Al Unser Jr. has just taken the win. Let's go to Gary Gerald. And before he climbs out of the car, here's the car owner, Roger Penske, the third Penske sweep this year, one, two, three. Was it the two days of testing here that really paved the way a week and a half ago? Well, I think that, uh, you know, testing always helps you. The cars have worked well on these types of circuits all year. And we've got three great drivers. Paul had a tough call on him there, I guess, uh, on that black flag, which put him behind Al. Al's running for the championship guard. Paul wants to win the race, so you've got a different set of situations for each driver, but it's a great day for the team. And again, our people won this race for us. I'm just thrilled to be here. Congratulations. Let's go back up to the booth, Paul. Thanks. Good. And Roger Penske as they score their third in a row for Penske at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The last two scored by Emerson Fittipaldi. Unofficial final standings. Al Unser Jr. Paul Tracy was 1.6 seconds behind and Emerson Fittipaldi rounded off the sweep. Then Robbie Gordon with a great race. We look down through the entire lineup of this field and that is the best finish, by the way, the sixth place finish for Adrian Fernandez of his career. So young Adrian had a really terrific day. We look all the way down through the 28 car field now of the run of the Miller Genuine Draft 200 from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And when we come back, we'll be speaking with this young man, the redhead, who has taken the win once again. What a season he is having. We'll talk with Allinger Jr. right after this. 
Basketball Championship next Sunday on ABC. Here at Mid-Ohio, it's Shades of Milwaukee, a Penske sweep, a first, second, and third. First, let's talk to third place finisher, Paul Tracy. A black flag, second place for you. What happened? Well, we just got a, I thought, you know, we had a good race going with the Marlboro car, and, uh, you know, we came up on a bunch of lap cars with Robbie Gordon leading the pack, and he didn't want to let anybody by, and then, uh, you know, we got into a yellow area, and he almost slid off the track, and I was able to slip by him at the apex, and they considered that passing under the yellow. So it's, uh, you know, again, I was had to come in, Lost about 10 seconds, and then after the yellow, uh, behind Robbie again, and didn't want to let me by, and Al was able to make up the gap, couldn't close. Emerson, it seems like this year you're always a bridesmaid. This day you're finishing third position, but it's always to your teammates. Well, I'm very pleased. I know the car was running uh, strong in the beginning, but I had a over pressure, over tire. The tires are too high pressure, and the second segment I was running strong. But I'd like to congratulate Junior and Paul. They did a fantastic job, and. The, Marlboro Team Penske one, two, three. What else we need? All the time. It seems like whenever you qualify up front, Al Jr., you seem to come home in front. But you're very serious about this championship this year. Well, you know, we hadn't finished the last couple races, and and we needed the points. And so, uh, you know, the big thing was to finish, finish, finish. And and um, and it was just a great day for the whole Marlboro Team Penske. What about the conversations with Roger Penske? He, he was working the radio awfully hard in the end there. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, Roger just gives me so much information. It's great, and uh, and I just, you know, he he can't he can't give me enough information. The more he talks, the better it is. And so, uh, um, you know, it's just really great being a part of this team. And and I want to say hello to Cody and Shannon at home, and we'll be home soon. Talking about this road course and this road race, it looked as if it was going to be Paul Tracy's and then it was his misfortune that was your good fortune. How do you treat that as a driver, as a teammate? Well, it was, you know, it was we were battling pretty hard and, and there was no, I wasn't going to be able to pass Paul on the racetrack and so we had a little bit of a pit strategy going along and then uh, and then they, he ran into that trouble under the yellow up there and and Robbie was tough to pass for for going that one lap down. You know, maybe he should have moved aside a little bit earlier or whatever. But uh, they they all went charging into that corner, and and everybody was locking him up, and and uh, and then he went by him. But. Uh, you know, those, those are the breaks of the games. You have to do everything right or you'll get caught out. A great ride for Al Unser Jr. Another great ride for a driver that's standing by with Gary Gerald. Well, it's young Adrian Fernandez with a career-best sixth-place finish today. And, Adrian, I know you had quite a tussle back there as you moved up from 14th, particularly with Nigel Mansell and Michael Andretti. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, that was this was one of my toughest uh, races ever. And uh, I was trying to... Mansell, I think, was struggling a little bit and was sort of slow and was blocking a little bit and tried to pass him once, I touched him. Then Michael, also I touched the wheels with Michael and suddenly he passed me, but I think it was a great finish for the whole Gales team and Tecate, Quaker and Amway. Indeed it was, and he grinned a moment ago and he says, the Penske's lapped everybody, but all the rest of us? He said, well, I'm third in class. Nice job. Thank you. All right, that's Adrian Fernandez, Paul. Now Emerson uh, Fittipaldi has already walked away with Paul Tracy, who, by the way, didn't sound like he was feeling all that well. He's had the flu most of the weekend. And Al Unser Jr., I was going to suggest when you saw the Goodyear hat on him that maybe after six wins they might get the hat size right, but maybe that's just the way he wears the hat, Bobby. <laughs> well, obviously, they throw all those hats on their heads right afterwards. They don't have time to adjust him, but his head definitely looked too small for that one. All right, here's the points. Al Unser Jr. picks up yet another three on his nearest rival, Emerson Fittipaldi. Paul Tracy drops three further behind Fittipaldi in, in the overall flow of the points, but 153, 117, 91 is the, is the point spread right now. Michael Andretti is, is hanging on, but the championship is all out of reach for him at this point. The question is going to be, can Al Unser Jr. hold on? Off to Loudon next week, and that's the final real oval of the season you'll see coverage on ESPN well the strategy really becomes a championship end game now there are only five races left it becomes very hard for anybody to make up the ground you know this was the seventh career pole for Al Jr. and he's won six of those races four for four this year that's quite an achievement so congratulations to Al Unser Jr. he has taken the win here in the Miller Genuine Draft 200 at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course we'll be back right after this Post from the beautiful Saratoga Springs. The Traverse Stakes live. Coverage begins at 4.30, 3.30 Central Time next week. Well, there they are, the Penske Sweep once again. First, 
second and third. And what a season we have seen thus far in the Indy cars. Now on to Loudon, and then on to a series of road courses and ending up, of course, at Laguna Seca, California, where the champion will be crowned. All of that coverage will come to you on ESPN. But We've had a terrific season thus far here on ABC. Consider what you've seen. Michael Andretti winning the very first race of this IndyCar season. Alan Ter Jr. taking his second Indianapolis 500. Jeff Gordon a week ago taking the first Brickyard 400. A great season of racing. Well, my thought exactly, Paul. I mean, we have seen, in the, of course, the 16 races make up the IndyCar Championship. Some of them on road courses like this one here, some on city courses, city streets, some on mile overalls, and some on super speedways. And yet this form of racing is so successful that it has given us close racing and spectacular racing on all forms of courses. Bobby Hunter, you've enjoyed it. Of course, your nephew is looking real strong. I certainly have. They're making Uncle Bobby awfully happy, and it's it's been really good racing. Hard is doing a whole lot better than they've been doing. Having Andrew Craig in is running IndyCar racing right now. Probably the best thing that's happened to this series, and I think it's a good look at what we're going to be looking at for a long time. Well, as we show you the names of all the people that have helped make this season possible, we want to thank all of them. Congratulate Al Unser Jr., but tell you, if you want to see some really great racing, the International Race of Champions is next. Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt really hammer it out, and this one will not tell you who won either the race or the championship. I'm Paul Page. So long from Mid-Ohio. The Miller Genuine Draft 200 has been brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. Craftsman, a line of 1,600 hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever. Wendy's, after 25 years, quality is still our recipe. And Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Coming up next on ABC Sports, 12 of the world's top drivers go head-to-head -head in identically prepared cars from the Michigan International Speedway. It's the final challenge in racing's ultimate test of skill, the International Race of Champions, next here on ABC Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Uh.